All right, y'all. We are back for another reaction. These have been fun. These have been fun for sure. Um, you know, we just been doing them games. Last last series was great. There was a lot of great series last series, but we're gonna talk about today the Lakers um series. We're gonna touch on their closeout game win a little bit. Um, we'll touch on game seven um with the uh Celtics and uh Sixers. And then uh, we'll do our predictions for the conference finals. So I'll start with the Lakers real quick. Um, You know, it's just been great. I think the stat came out today that we haven't lost a home game since March 26th. So it's extremely impressive Um, to be able to carry that over in the postseason has been tremendous for us. To see a team who, you know, people said wouldn't make the playoffs, you know, wouldn't make it in the play-in, you know, wouldn't beat the Grizzlies, wouldn't beat the Warriors. And we just continue to can continue to over, you know, come to odds. I think that's the best thing for our ball club right now um, to any team who hasn't lost a home game in the playoffs and hasn't lost since March 26 at home is the most scariest team in the, in the playoffs. I don't care what anyone says. I mean, you know, in the, um, in the Grizzly series, we had six different players, you know, lead and scoring throughout the series, you know, which is unheard of. And, you know, we just have guys stepping up. We saw that, you know, in um, game one, it was Schroeder and D low as well as AD um, game three, D Lo came on, had a big game. Obviously, game four, my guy Lonnie Walker came on big. And um game six, Austin Reeves, you know, had a great game as well as we played well collectively. But just to have so many guys come off the bench and perform on a game to game basis. When and when we already have two dominant, you know, players in LeBron and A D, I think is has been great for us. And as a fan, it's been amazing to watch. And, you know, I just think it was actually silly if we, for anyone who thought we were going to blow a 3-1 lead. I mean, the way this ball comes playing, our defense, you know, 80s impact on the defensive end, LeBron James being who he is, you know what I'm saying, one of the GOATs of all time. You know, I just think that there's no way we were losing. And, you know, that they, they ran through Curry. I don't know if the Warriors are a playoff team without Curry. I really don't. You know what I'm saying? If you take away Curry from that team, I don't think they're a playoff team. So that those are my thoughts on that. I'm happy to move on the second round because, I mean, I want to chip. You know, I'm not – I've seen that we can perform at a high level, so I'm not satisfied with just beating the Warriors or the Grizzlies. I want to chip. So that's that's my main goal. Yeah, I definitely hear you on that for sure. Um, yeah, you touched up on a lot of great points, talking about, you know, Brown and AD a lot, obviously, and their impact. Um, you know, they, they made that uh, change in game six going to uh, Vanderbilt off the bench. So that was kind of interesting to see um, as we move forward, like what type of lineups they'll have out there. And, you know, the, the Nuggets are a way different team than the Warriors in some, in some ways, you know, their best players, Jokic, obviously a big compared to, you know, the Warriors who are guard oriented. So it's going to be, it's going to be way different. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, though, if they do keep D'Lo and Dennis in the starting lineup. I thought that was a good move um, against the Warriors, at least. So, you know, it's just going to be interesting to see what type of adjustments Ham makes going from this series to the Nuggets series. Um, Obviously, my pick was wrong. <laughs> um, you know, I think the Warriors as a team just weren't good enough this year, kind of hovering around 500 all year, um, t terrible road record. They lost their last three games on the road this season. You know, it just kind of shows, like, this series kind of showed who they truly were all season. And, um, you know, just too inconsistent. You know, Clay was probably one of the worst series of his career. Um, you know, Jordan Poole is non non-existent all playoffs. And so it was just too much pressure on Curry to deliver game in, game out. And you know, like you said, like you said, AD and Bron played a huge, huge role in that, as well as you know the role players. You know, each role player has a, has their own moments, and you know the Lakers. I think the role players, you know, it's a different guy each game. Like we've said all postseason, Reeves game six, you know, D'Lo game two or three was, and you know Lonnie game four. Like it's just a new guy stepping up. You know what you're gonna get from Bron. You know what you're gonna get from AD at least defensively, and, you know, AD has brought it offensively the majority of the time. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see, um, like I said, Darvin Ham's adjustments moving in. 
to game uh game one against the Nuggets. Um yeah, I just this series is definitely harder for me to predict than the Eastern Conference series, in my opinion, because I just think I don't know, it's just Jokic has been a monster all playoffs, but AD that matchup's gonna be insane. AD and Jokic. Like what what do you think is key to slowing down Jokic, in your opinion? Um, I mean, obviously Jokic is playing at a high level, you know, probably one of the best, if not the best player in the world right now. You know what I'm saying? He's playing at an efficient level, but to slow down Jokic is um is just gonna be partially, you know. It we're we're the best team to do it if that makes sense. You know, we're number one in defensive rating. You know, in the playoffs right now, AD is contested like thirty eight more shots than every other player. He's first in blocks, first in deflections, first in loose balls cl- covered. So you know, AD has been you know the best defensive player in this series. Right, we're not gonna slow down Jokic like any other player. You know, he's gonna he's gonna have his production, and mainly it's because he can play make so well, but. I think the matchups he's been going against have been a little more in his favor versus a guy like Anthony Davis. So I think it's just about slowing him down. Right. You know, just not letting him, you know, score as easy as possible, like pushing him out to the three point line and making them run his off their offense out there. You know what I'm saying? When he gets that low deep seal, he can almost score against anyone because he's 280. He's like 290, bro. You know what I'm saying? But I think mainly it's about limiting Jamal Murray. I think that's a big thing with this series because, and I think Vando's going to be the guy to do that. I really do. I mean, he showed, you know, like you said, Steph Curry, we're not going to stop Steph Curry, but we slowed him down in, um, you know, those first few games in the series. You know what I'm saying? Even his last game, game six, he did, he was kind of slowed down. He didn't have that same production. So I think the big thing is slowing down Jamal Murray because we know what Jokic is going to do. I mean, he's a, he was an MVP, MVP candidate for a reason, but with Murray, they count on him to score a lot when they have their bench guys in there, right? And also, he's their main, you know, playmaker with Jokic. That pick and roll is really hard to stop. But we put a guy like on Vando on him. I think that's going to help us a lot. And don't be surprised because, you know, we definitely want to keep AD in the paint. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, you see LeBron on Jokic a lot this series and we put AD on Gordon, you know what I'm saying, just just to, like, be able to keep him in the paint because we've showed those sparks, you know, the same thing how we – you know, we had uh, AD on Wiggins and sometimes even GP too. You know what I'm saying? Just Or if, if a guy comes off the bench on their team who doesn't really like, you know, shoot the ball well, don't be surprised if we put AD on him just to be able to have that, you know, figure in the paint. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to be a tough series. Don't get me wrong. You know, Devin, Denver's a well-rounded team. They've proved it a one seed for a reason. But truthfully, I feel really confident for us, regardless of how good they are. I do think it's going to be a hard series, but our road has been way tougher than the Nuggets. I mean, you know, they play the Timberwolves, who are not a good ball club. Um, you know, they play the Suns, uh, two of the games without Chris Paul and Aiton. But also that team was like, you know, Monty Williams got fired. You know, that team didn't run any sets. You know, it was just ISO. They played through two players. You know what I'm saying? They counted on Book and KD to get 40. You know what I'm saying? And they dropped two. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think we would have dropped two against the Suns. And that's mainly because of our defensive prowess. So I feel like I feel confident. You know, we went through a tough Grizzlies team, one of the best def- one of the best defensive teams in the league. You know what I'm saying? They were banged up for sure. You know what I'm saying? But we still beat them convincingly in six games. Warriors, they had a lot of people over us. They're the defending champs for a reason. You know what I'm saying? We outplayed them and we outfought them too. That's one thing. They didn't have any fight in that game six. We beat it out of them, literally. So I think that's the biggest thing for us. And um, so I feel confident, but it's going to be tough slowing down Jokic but because he's such a great player. But I think it's about, you know, not letting MPJ get hot from those, you know, catch and shoots. You know, it's just the same thing with us, you know, because we have the personnel to where we can, you know, potentially slow down other players. You know, we have Vando, Schroeder, AD, LeBron. We have size, we have length. We've been, you know, second in defensive rating for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's about definitely limiting Murray, but also like Bruce Brown, we're not going to let Bruce Brown get 25 off the bench. That can't happen. You know what I'm saying? MPJ can't have 14 in the first quarter. So I think it's going to take us some time to figure us out. We could drop we could drop a game at home this game one, you know what I'm saying, if we do. But I think it's going to be a competitive series, and 
I think the Nuggets do have their hands full. Even We do as well, but the Nuggets have their hands full too, and I think a lot of people aren't recognizing that. Yeah, for sure. Um, you kind of touched up on the defense. Um, I feel like offensively for the Lakers too, it's going to be a lot of high pick and roll because, you know, there's one thing I'm not, you know, confident in the Nuggets is just like guarding that pick and roll with Jokic. Um, you know, I feel like the Lakers do have an advantage there with all the different, you know, guys that they can put in that pick and roll. Whether it's, you know, D'Lo, um, Dennis Schroeder, Austin Reeves, um, you know, obviously LeBron. So, you know, you got a lot of guys that can, you know, create their own shot through that pick and roll, um, you know, create other shots for other players. So, you know, one thing I, I noticed in game six was LeBron really, you know, got to his spot, but wasn't always looking to score. He was looking to find those open kickouts to those uh, three-point shooters. And, you know, I feel like he really did – he really um, did that very, very well in game six as opposed to, you know, a few other games. I thought he wasn't doing it, but, like, it was like every single every single time he was getting to the rim or he was finding open shooters for great looks. So, you know, I think – I expect LeBron to do that as much as possible this series as well. And, you know, when, when LeBron gets downhill, it's just – it's tough to stop because, you know, he's 6'8", 250, athletic. You know, he's, he's just so hard to keep in front. And, you know, his, his playmaking and passing ability, too, is just one of the best of all time. So, these guys – these Laker role players are going to have to hit open shots. They're going to get a lot of open shots, I think. And, you know, I think, you know, those, those looks are going to make their offense and – make their offense even that much more potent and defensively it's going to help them, you know, set their defense. And when they set their defense, it's tough to stop. It's tough to score against them. So I think offensively for the Lakers, it's going to be very key to get, you know, those pick and rolls as much as possible going against Jokic's drop coverage. Yeah. I mean, no doubt, like it's going to be a hard series for us, you know, it's going to be tough, but I think these are the two best teams in basketball period East or West right now. I truly feel that way. And um, I just think that, um, you know, it, it's kind of hard. I feel like our path so far has been way more difficult than theirs. I really I really do feel that way. And it's not that, you know, no one, the Suns aren't good or anything like that. It's just they, they played through two players, you know. And I think that you touched on it. We have multiple guys that can operate around the pick and roll. You know, like you mentioned, LeBron, D'Lo, Schroeder, Reeves, you know what I'm saying? Even, you know, we even like, you know what I'm saying? We have like Rui getting there and he gets some post up. We just have a variety of stuff that, you know, they, they're they going to have to guard as well as a variety of stuff that, that um you know, we have to guard against them. So I think the team that kind of figured out, figure out, figure <laughs> figures out how to attack, you know, that other team more and like more efficiently is going to win the series. So we're just going to have to see, but I think it's going to take all those guys on the bench to elevate their game as well as LeBron and AD elevating their game, you know, to beat the Nuggets. I think, you know what I'm saying? I think it's just going to have to be that. But, you know, I just like – it's kind of hard for me to really believe in that Nuggets bench, you know, when they're going against the Suns bench, you know, who's like Bismack Biombo, Torrey Craig, you know, Cameron Payne, you know, you know, Londa. It's kind of hard for me to really – have faith in their bench versus us going against, you know, the Grizzlies bench, one of the deepest rosters in the league, the Warriors bench, you know what I'm saying? Even those those guys don't have that offensive prowess. They still have those defensive guys, those role players who can, you know, make a stand and, you know, and stuff like that. So I definitely think, you know, we've been more battle tested than them, but I mean, they got the number one seed for a reason, bro. That's not their fault. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be a tough series. I think, you know, I just, I just trust LeBron. I really do. I think, you know, what he showed, he won us, like you touched on, he won us that game six. I mean, the reads he was making, he made, like, I can't name a wrong read that comes off my head that he made in that game. Like, his reads were were amazing, you know what I'm saying? And he was out the break. Like, it just looked like we kind of just, like, gave him that game five. We were just like, yep, y'all can have that game five. We're going to blow y'all out of home. So, I think, you know, I trust LeBron. You know, I trust AD, you know what I'm saying? I think, you know, we we do get on AD for being inconsistent and whatever and stuff like that, but I think he's been a lot more consistent, 
he still has his moments, but I think he's been a lot more consistent in this playoffs in the regular season. So I feel good going into it. I just think everyone's going to have to play the same way. And, you know, the Nuggets are a great team, so it's going to be a great series. But, yeah, let's – um. Let's touch on um the Celtics Heat um conference uh final series. Uh, I'll let you start off. Yeah, so um rematch of last year, rematch of 2020. You know, these teams have seen each other a lot here in these in these playoffs and Eastern Conference Finals last few years. Um man, I just the Celtics Sixers game was very just I wouldn't say even surprising. I like, I wouldn't say I expected it, but like, man, like Harden and B just shrunk. Doc Rivers has had a history of shrinking in big spots. And it really, that series really flipped for me when Tatum, you know, he was awful the first three quarters of game six. But when Tatum flipped that switch in the fourth quarter and, um, you know, had, I think it was 16 points, you know, kind of took that game over and then obviously it carried over to game seven. So I think, I think Philly's best chance is to close it out in six, especially the way Tatum and some of those other guys were playing for Boston. But yeah, going to the the Heat Celtics series now. Um, I just think you know the Celtics have lacked kind of some 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 consistency as well. I think you know there were thirty games and possessions throughout the game where they just don't look like a championship team at all. You know they're they're kind of you know nonchalant or like not focused all the time, you know what I'm saying? Kind of streaky a little bit on offense as well. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, the Heat have been very impressive this postseason, especially without Tyler Hero. Um, you know, their offense was not great in the regular season. And, you know, Jimmy Butler's kind of put the team on his back with the help of some of those role players, you know, Kyle Lowry, Max Struess, um, Martin, you know, Bam. Like, all those guys have played well, so – I just think it's going to be interesting to see if Tyler Hero can make his way back. You know, obviously he's hurt, and I don't know when he's going to be back, but um, he's just a big piece for them offensively that I don't think without him they can win this series, even with Boston's kind of lack of inconsistency. But I I still feel Boston with Tatum and Brown, like they have two of the three best players in this series, and I think those two will have – you know, one of them will always have a good game, in my opinion. I just view that as, you know, such an advantage to where, you know, Jimmy Butler doesn't, like, not that Jimmy Butler doesn't have the help, but it's like he doesn't have that other co-star like Tatum has with Brown or Brown has with Tatum. So I think that's going to be kind of a big difference in this series. Yeah, um, you know, it's obviously the same matchup, you know, three years in a row in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um. I don't know. I just, you know, it, you know, top to bottom, the roster Celtics is better. We know that um, they have some inconsistency, but, you know, ultimately I think their roster, you know, probably get them through, but I don't know. It's just, they just don't give me like that would like Tatum's performance. Don't get me wrong. Game seven was absolutely like he, he sent a message. He, he sent a message. So, you know, I don't think there's much you could say about him, but just I really feel like the te- both teams in the West are better than both of those teams. And I, I like I know it's hard because the Celtics like like their roster is like the best in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. It's just like I just feel like they rely on like you know their the three so much, and like I mean, think about how many threes Tatum hit in that in that that fifty one. They had a lot of they were shoot, they shot fifty two percent from three, bro. You know what I'm saying? And like, of course, Tatum, you can't take any away from that. Fifty one in the game seven is absolutely legendary. That's a legendary performance. So, props to him for that. You know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't sure if he was going to show up. I I'll admit it. Like I wasn't sure if he was going to show up in that game seven, and he did. But they they shot like fifty percent from three, bro. You know what I'm saying? Some of those things like you got to figure out how to win games when you're shooting thirty five percent from three. And they haven't shown the ability to do that. You know what I'm saying? And against a better defensive team in the Heat, you know what I'm saying? I think the series could go either way. You know, the Celtics, I do have the Celtics winning the series, though. I'll make my, you know, little take right now. But I wouldn't, like, 
it wouldn't surprise me if the Heat, but I think whoever comes out the West, I truly believe is winning the finals. And and I'm not saying it's going to be like a sweep or a gentleman sweep. I think it's going to be a competitive series, but I think, you know, the ability of elevate, you know, elevation in their game that we've seen from Jokic, that we've seen from Murray, that we've seen from LeBron, AD, the role players on the Nuggets, the role players on the Lakers, I think it's higher. It's higher over there. And I think it it comes from I think part of the Celtics, you know, kind of inconsistency in the playoffs comes from, you know, not the lack of tough schedule that those guys in the West have, because from one to ten, it was a it was a race. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it was kind of just the Celtics and Bucks just chilling at the top all year. You know what I'm saying? And oh Brown, you go off one night. Tatum, you go off one night. Oh, smart, you give us 20. Derek White, you give us 20. That's you know, that's fortunate to have, but once you have to have those gritty wins, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be surprised if the, the Heat win some of those grit, those grit close games. But it, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a very competitive series. Personally, I'm not too like I, I do want to see how it plays out, but personally I'm not too, you know, excited about it just because we've seen it for the third year now. And neither of these teams has won. You know, it's not like Cavs Warriors like back and forth or you know what I'm saying? It's just like all right, you know what I'm saying? Neither of these teams have shown they get there and they lose, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's going to be one of those things. It's going to be it's going to be interesting for sure, but yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to not even just cuz they're on my own team, the West series. I think that Nuggets Lakers right now, two of the best teams in the league. Yeah, no doubt. Um I do kind of want to go back to your point about like Boston living by the three-point shot cuz you know, like, I feel like they only take threes or layups. Like, I feel like there's no mid-range game whatsoever. And I feel like that's very similar to James Harden. And not to not to even interrupt you, not to even interrupt you, but, like, for the athleticism and the wings and for them, they really don't score in transition that much. Yeah. You know, and I think that's something they could use to their advantage. Oh, yeah. Like, like, a lot, you know what I'm saying? They can get in transition a lot, but they really don't. But you can go ahead, though. Yeah, that's a great point for sure. Like, you would think with, you know, those type of level of defensive players that they have, like forcing turnovers and getting out and running would very be very beneficial. But, like, they don't really use that. So, you know, it's just a lot of tough buckets that they get. You know, obviously they get a lot of open shots. But, you know, Tatum shots, majority of them are very well contested. So, um, but, yeah, going back to that Rockets point, like, it kind of just reminds me of – you know, James Harden's Rockets, where they just live and die by the three or the layup. Like, there's no mid-range. There's no real transition buckets, you know what I'm saying? So, I feel like, you know, that's that's definitely something, like, they got to address. Like, they, they just got to get easier looks. And if they get easier looks, I think they can definitely win the championship this year. But, you know, I feel like they just make it too tough on themselves. And um that and the lack of consistency from Tatum at times, you know, the lack of consistency of some of the role players, you know, definitely gives me some concerns if they can actually win the title this year. But I think I I agree with you. I, I'm looking forward to that Western series more just because it's, you know, a rematch of the bubble and also, you know, the elevation of the Nuggets. I feel like their role players are far better than they have in the past and they're finally healthy again. So it's it's gonna be interesting to see if it's their if it's their season or if it's you know another another championship run for LeBron. So, but um, yeah. So, what do you think? Who do you think, legacy wise, gets the most out of winning a championship in terms of like these players left? Um, I think. I think it's Jokic, and and I understand how people would say LeBron, but I do think it's Jokic mainly because, you know, LeBron's career is already solidified. You know, if if he loses in this series, you know, he's a Hall of Famer, he's a one A one B, whatever you want to put him. You know, best player in the world or best player of all time. I mean, you know, he his career is solidified. But for Jokic, you know, think about that for his career, he's one of the most efficient players of all time. You know, what I'm saying he's a two time MVP. You know, what I'm saying he's. He's an all he's been an all-star. Like he's been like a successful player so far, but that chip is the only thing missing. You know what I'm saying? And you know, it would it, it would like you said, it would be conversations about him being one of the best players in the world. You know what I'm saying? 
So I think it's definitely big for Jokic. If LeBron gets it, it I'd say like if LeBron wins this year, it'll be like just us appreciating his greatness to a even higher level. Like and and that's that's hard to even think of because we obviously know he's one of the greatest players of all time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just say one of the greatest just because I don't want to get into that Jordan, you know, LeBron debate and stuff like that, you know, that because you could do that for hours and hours and hours. But I think that um, I think it is Jokic. I really do. Just because for him to, you know, win a ring, now it's solidify his career, not solidify it, but it would be big for his career and big for his, you know, representation in the league moving forward. So and a lot of players can't win as the best player on our team. Let's face it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just hard to do. So that would, that would give him some, you know what I'm saying? That would give him some little like pressure off his shoulders. Giannis did it already. You know what I'm saying? So it'll be interesting for sure, but I definitely think it's Jokic. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Like, you know, a lot of people, including myself, have, you know, doubted or even hated on Jokic and saying like, you don't deserve those two MVPs. He's not, He's still not really truly a top five player in the league. Like, if it, if he wins a championship this year, when Jamal Murray's finally healthy again, and Michael Porter's healthy, and you know he has the the necessary pieces around him, like you gotta give him his props for sure. And you know those kind of solidify his two MVPs and like his standing in the league. Like, I think all the doubters would go away for sure. Um, and it would be also a rare instance where. Um, you know, like the best player on the championship team doesn't have another Hall of Fame caliber player w- alongside with him. Like he he doesn't have – Jamal Murray's a great player. He's never been an all-star. You know what I'm saying? So most of these teams that win the title generally have a top five player in the league along with another all-star, two all-stars, or maybe not even a Hall of Fame type of player. So Jokic you know, doesn't have that, so he would be even more impressive. But – yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think people are going to have to start having those conversations if he is the best player in the league. And, you know, I know some people probably think, oh, you're you're making winning seem too much of a priority. But, like, winning helps, and having two MVPs helps. So, you know, Jokic has been so efficient, so dominant this postseason. Like, yeah, I get his defense isn't great, but, you know, either is Steph Curry's, and he's one of the best players ever, like, you know, his offense is just so much – it's just so great and efficient. I just think people are going to have to start, you know, respecting Jokic as one of those all-time centers potentially. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, I mean, Jokic isn't a bad defender. You know, he's – he's. it's not like he's a liability or something like that. It's just like – you know what I'm saying? It's, it's hard to play defense at 290, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, I mean – but his offense, like you said, he's just so efficient, great playmaker, you know, can score. He's a great scorer, you know what I'm saying? I think that's a – I think with – you know, you get those with LeBron and with Luka, you know, their scoring is like kind of a hidden, you know, gem of their game, you know what I'm saying? And because their playmaking are so great, you know what I'm saying? Not that I'm comparing Jokic and uh, Doncic to LeBron, obviously, but I'd also like to throw an AD there. I think this ring for AD as well as – because, I mean – you know, we're going to have a lot of guys perform, but, like, we need AD perform to win. Like, you know, it's just a fact. So I think it'd be big for AD. And, you know, I would consider if AD, you know, depending on how he played, if we if he won the ring, I would consider having AD all of Famer. I really would because, I mean, he's already got one chip. He's got multiple defensive uh, first team. He has, a, he has a defense player of the year, right? I think so. Yeah. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he does, yeah. Yeah. Like he yeah, he has a, a hold on, let me look that up real quick. But like yeah, like I mean AD, you know, multiple all all defensive team selections, you know what I'm saying? He's he's won a ring, you know, he's been a great, you know, player, you know what I'm saying? But you know, rings do matter, you know. So I think that'd be big for his career. Um oh no, he was I don't I don't know if he has yet. No, he's not he hasn't won. He hasn't won one yet, but I think that'll change. I, I think he'll get one at some point, but I think he'd, he'd start to be in that conversation. Though I still think he needs a little more, but, I mean, AD still, he's not that old, bro. He's he's really not that old, so he's got time, but, yeah. 
I think it'd be big for AD just because coming in the year, you know, you hear the day to day Davis and <laughs> and we all you you know people joke and on Twitter about him being injured all the time and being fragile and stuff like that. But for him to overcome that and win another championship, I think that'd be big for his career as well. And that'd make the Lakers decide like, yeah, we definitely want to build around this dude moving forward when LeBron leaves. You know what I'm saying? So it'll be interesting how it turns out. But yeah, I I'd, I'd like to add him in there, but. I want to I want to touch on um the game seven and mainly not really we could talk about the Celtics we did a little bit but the Sixers and I'll start it off I'm I don't know I I really thought the Sixers were gonna win this series just because you know I didn't know about Tatum's inconsistencies and you know he came out fifty ball but more than anything you know you we can't just be like Tatum had a fifty ball and like that's the reason they lost no we they lost because the lack of production from James Harden and Joel Embiid once he, once again. And it's the same thing over and over a year ago. And we kind of just, I think we just have to accept who Harden is. I, I hate to like say it like that, but like, it's just like, bro, like it's the second year in a row that PJ Tucker scored more than you in a closeout game. You know what I'm saying? Just think about that. You know what I'm saying? And Joel Embiid, I think, I think it's not over for Joel Embiid at all, but for Harden, I question if he's ever going to win a ring now. Like I like, I think about him in that CP3 type type scenario. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. He just, they just, he just doesn't perform, bro. You know what I'm saying? Embiid, obviously, you don't want to see that performance from your MVP, but you know, I think Embiid was really great all season. You know, this team wouldn't have been there without him at all. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really put a lot of it on um Embiid. I put a lot of it on Doc Rivers and I put a lot of it on um James Harden. I really do. And I don't and I'm not saying it like I hate Harden and like that because I really do like watch Harden play, but it's just like I feel like we have to accept what he is in the playoffs. Like he's just not gonna show up, bro. Like he's not. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. I think you know, we're going to have to start looking at Bead like that, too, because, like, he has had numerous chances to, you know, go far in the postseason. He's never even been to the conference finals. So, obviously, I'm not going to put all the blame on him. You know, Harden deserves a lot of blame. Rivers deserves a lot of blame. Um, but, you know, Embiid and Harden, Demon score half. Demon combined for half the points Tatum had. Like, that's just unacceptable, you know, so – Real quick, I want you to I, – I'm, I'm going to say some Name, like, your top seven to eight players in the league right now. It doesn't have to be in any order. I don't want you to have to think about that. Just name the top eight players in the league right now, and I'm going to make a point. Uh, Yeah, probably Jokic, um, Braun, Curry, Giannis, uh, probably Embiid still. Obviously, he won MVP, so I'll throw him in there. Uh, Luka. Jason Tatum, you know, those type of guys. Kevin Durant. Right. So yeah. all those things considered, what do all those players besides Embiid have in common? They've been out the second round. Or rings. Yeah. Exactly. He's never been out the second round. So, like, I, I do think he's a top five player, don't get me wrong, but, like, it's hard to really put him in that conversation when he's been in the league for what? what is this like year eight now, something like that. And he hasn't made out the second round. It's hard to, and it's not like he's had some fluky teams either. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think he's had the the best teams that people acknowledge, you know, the best team with, you know, Butler on that team, Kawhi shot. What are you going to do about that? You know, it's just, but he hasn't been out the second round, bro. So I think you're right. You're spot on like that. I don't want to take anything away from Embiid. I do think, Personally, he is a top five player still. And I think, you know, he was probably, you know, I, I do think he deserved M MVP either last year or this year. I do. But it's just hard to like, I don't know. It's just hard to really give him that credit, bro. You know? Yeah, for sure. Um, and what he kind of said in the press conference yesterday, like yeah. James Harden can't win it by herself. You know, it's a, 5v5 game you know we saw a lot of NBA player NBA players be like what I know Dame said it so I mean like I just like 
I don't think you want to hear those type of things from your best player as an organization, you know? You yeah, know? it's just oh. kind of a lack of self-awareness. Accountability. Like, accountability, yeah. Like, just own up to it. You didn't, you didn't perform. You didn't play at a level you can, you can play at. So, you know, just own up to it, be accountable for it. But he wasn't, so. But, yeah, I think – I think going to the Celtics, back to the Celtics for Tatum, like say what all you want. And I've been, you know, a big fan of Tatum, but, you know, he has had some very inconsistency perform performances and wasn't good in the finals last year and all that. That's 100% true. But he has at least – he's won and shown up in big spots before. And, you know, he's gotten to the conference finals a lot in his young career. You know, he's had good teams and stuff around him. but Yeah, he he was drafted into, like, a really good situation, but that's not his fault. I mean, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's all I'm saying. Like, like Embiid's had those opportunities, too. Like, they've been a one seed numerous times. And he's, he's yet to get to the conference finals, you know. So, I, I, it, it is something to look out for moving forward in these, you know, next five years. If Embiid can be, like, a guy that you can actually build around, like – like you can you can take those years right where Kawhi hit that shot you might take this year you might take the year where um Ben Simmons and all of them were hurt in the bubble year and like they lost but think about they lost to the Heat last season in the second round the roster was better than that team and they lost to the Hawks and the roster was better than that team so that's two years that you can't really you know you can't really let those go you know, and I don't know. It's just like, it's just like, who does he need to have around him, you know, to, to be that, to get there, you know, mm-hmm. and it might just be a top 10, another top 10 player in the league. It might just have to be that, you know, yeah. I guarantee if, you know, and I mean, Jokic's team is better, you know, than, than the, uh, the Nuggets are better than the Sixers, like top to bottom, but Guarantee though, I don't know. I don't know if Jokic was on the Nugget the Sixers team. It'd be interesting how to see, but I don't know. But yeah, but yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, I think MB can be facing that type of Anthony Davis, where like, like I don't know if he can be the best player on a on a true contender, but like AD didn't also didn't have the help, so that's a way different situation. But like AD AD needed LeBron to win, so. I think MB could be in that type of direction as an elite two way big man, but I, I think we I think we need to give AD a little more time. You know what I'm saying? He's still he's still he's still pretty young and he was pretty dominant in New Orleans. He just was I think that's too early to say. I think you can say that about MB just because he's been the best player on his team for years. You know what I'm saying? AD is probably for four or five years, but we're getting close. So um that's going to cap it off, man. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll have a new guest first time on. It's going to be exciting. We'll be reacting to the Lakers Nuggets series.